A few weeks ago, we brought you an update on the latest from the Rapidadion shipyards. We've taken a break from rocket-firing destroyers and sinking model Titanics to rebuild an old classic, the RC aircraft carrier that launches and recovers RC airplanes. Only this time, it's bigger. Much bigger. This is video two of two, documenting the major construction phase of our 13-foot, 250-pound replica of the USS Kitty Hawk, the largest RC vessel we've ever built. When we left off with part one of this series earlier in the season, we'd just taken delivery on our main drive motors, and we were still finishing up the propeller shaft struts. Before we could start work on the flight deck, those motors needed to be secured. We mounted them to a 1 8 inch aluminum plate using two bolts apiece, and mated them to the propeller shafts using custom-turned universal joints. We installed two 2.5 inch electric cooling fans above them to spin at high speed in order to assist with cooling. The motors and fans are both controlled via a homemade distribution panel offering main power, individual toggles for each main motor, and two servo-actuated throttles. Each is a double-pull, double-throw, center-off switch controlling one bank of two motors. Port and starboard propellers are thus independently controllable for better maneuverability. For simplicity's sake, there's no speed control on this vessel, unlike the rest of the Rapidadion fleet, though one may be added later. The main control panel also handles two other onboard systems. The first is the model's cooling water loop. A Hobbyco pump draws water through an intake at the keel and dumps it overboard via two ports above the waterline. This is an aesthetic touch. It offers no practical benefit to the model's operation, but it replicates the real ship's cooling water discharge. We installed a similar system on our Brooklyn steam tug. The other system is the Kitty Hawk's main island radar array, which is driven by an electric motor at about 30 RPM. A second radar panel spinning on a dedicated mast further aft is self-contained. The model's radio transmitter receiver pair is a 2.4 GHz 4-channel Tactic TTX-404 controlling steering and propulsion up to an as-yet undetermined range, with the antenna and receiver battery located below decks. From pumps to motors to radio, it's all powered by a heavy-duty 12-volt marine battery rated at 685 marine cranking amps mounted amidships. Now, since we're not sure of Kitty Hawk's total amp draw yet, we can't yet speculate on total possible runtime. The impending shakedown crews will help determine that. The battery's 35 pounds make up a portion of the Kitty Hawk's ballast, along with a 6-gallon tank filled with water, which adds another 64 pounds to the unloaded model's 100-pound displacement. Making up the balance of the 250-pound displacement required? The flight deck, fabricated from 3 8 inch mahogany marine plywood and cut into three segments for easy access to the interior. The sections lock together to cover the Kitty Hawk's entire topside, with the aftmost portion capable of being lifted like a car hood for control panel servicing. Runway markings are hand-painted, and voids have been left within the model for catapult system installation when Kitty Hawk is made ready to handle her air wing. The island structure is made almost entirely from 3 16 inch plywood and locks into place via a pair of brass pins at its base, between which sits the connection point for the radar power. That radar sail itself is fashioned from household window screening. Decals replicating the real ship's markings are custom printed, and stack side air intakes are approximated with wood slatting. On our model, these intakes offer ventilation for the ship's interior. The crane base is a repurposed copper pipe and some of the radomes are ping-pong balls, while others are repurposed broom handles. More details are still being added as this video hits the feeds. There's still much to be done before our Kitty Hawk replica can be declared ready for flight operations, most notably the installation of the catapult and arrestor systems. But as of Memorial Day 2013, after a 130-day build process, the vessel is over 90% complete and ready for her first float test followed immediately by sea trials, with air operations to commence later this summer. Stay tuned to Rapidnadion here on YouTube, at Rapidnadion.com, and on Facebook and Twitter so you don't miss the running in and testing of our largest ever scale model. And, as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.